Hi everybody, it's Kathy from Real Life Health Coaching here and today I've got dietitian Shaitza, hopefully I got that right, uh, from Toronto in Canada. Um, would you like to share us, uh, with us, everybody in the group, a little bit about yourself and what you do? Absolutely. So yes, like you said, my name is Shaitza Dehuddin. I am a registered dietitian. Um, I have uh, I am located in the greater Toronto area in Canada and I have a private clinic which is called Modest Nutrition. So uh, my philosophy is, that, philosophy is actually that uh, I believe in empowering women so that they can nourish themselves and then nurture their families. Um, so I like my focus is in women's health mostly. So I do see people who do have PCOS who are trying or struggling to conceive. Um, and then eventually when they have a child, uh, I help them you know, go through pregnancy you know, more in, uh, have a better, uh, healthy pregnancy, basically. And then when the ch children turn into picky eaters, eventually that's, I try to help manage that and just show them the steps of how to manage picky eating. So that's sort of, in a nutshell, what I do. <laughs> great, great. And I'm really looking forward to what you're going to talk about today, which is meal Absolutely. planning and meal timing. So I'll just let you go with it. That's okay, okay, awesome. Great. Thank you. So uh, first of all, uh, Kathy, thank you so much for having me. Um, I wanted to actually talk about this. Uh, I'm going to share my slides if it's okay with you. Yep, great. Okay. That'll be good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, so, um, so I've mentioned that um, I s try to empower women uh, to, nur to nourish themselves. And one of the ways I do that is by helping them create their own meal plans and know what happens in their body and what they need to be able to um, create their own, uh, be, be empowered to create their own healthy lifestyle and not be, um, not be told by foreign sources. Like people, uh, you know, there's marketing claims always. Uh, anything that's trending these days, um, you know, it basically becomes a new, uh, best pill in the modern market. So I wanted to just help you make the right decisions for yourself, making sure that you uh, can create your own meal plan for yourself and for your family. Right. And um, so I'm going to just talk a little bit about polycystic ovarian syndrome. I think that's basically um, most of women who are in this group do have this. Uh, you know, it's um, PCOS is a very complex condition and we still haven't, we don't really know what, the real causes and even the pathophysiology is not completely understood till now. But what we actually know about in, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome is that it's uh, an imbalance of hormones, right? So women who have, they tend to have a higher androgen level or higher testosterone levels. And that also results in insulin resistance. So there go hand in hand. One of the biggest hallmarks, not everybody knows about it. And at least the last three, four years, um, Ago, people didn't really see the connection between PCOS and insulin resistance, but they're really tightly connected. And so that's why it makes uh, women who do have PCOS have a harder time losing weight and because we have a lot more cravings than people who don't have PCOS. And that's not great because whenever you're diagnosed with PCOS, one of the first things doctor tells you to do is go and lose weight, right? And um, like I said, it's harder to lose weight when you have PCOS and you have so many more cravings. So I'm gonna actually share with you one thing that you can change today, right now, um, to set the stage for you to have a more balanced um, hormone levels, which will eventually help you lose some weight. Um, and that is just changing one small thing and I'm gonna come to that. But I'm going to, first of all, share a scenario with you, okay? So, and this, you might be able to relate to this or you might not. Um, but I'll just share it with you, okay? So let's say you wake up in the morning and you have to rush to work and you don't have time to prepare breakfast, right? So you go to work without breakfast, but you know you have to eat something. I mean, it, everybody says that you should eat something, you should have breakfast. So you decide to pick up maybe a coffee and a muffin before going to work. You pick it up, you go to work, um, and then uh, the next meal you have is lunch. Say you're having a good lunch, say you're having a salad. Okay, so you have your salad. 
uh, a few hours into maybe around 3 p.m., you start having some cravings, you start feeling a low energy and you decide, you know what, I'm just going to go home eventually in a few hours. I'm going to make my healthy stir fry. Uh, so it's okay. Um, I'll just maybe let myself, uh, I'll, I'll just wait a little bit and I'll have a little bit of coffee just to give myself some energy and then I'll go about it. So you do that, you have your coffee or tea, um, and then uh, and then you go, you're on your way back to home and on your commute, you're stuck in traffic. And then uh, you are starving by this point and you see, let's say McDonald's or some amazing restaurant just around the corner from your house, right? And you are thinking to yourself, should I pick that <laughs> burger? Or should I, you know, hold on? And then you think, okay, I have to go home. I have to start cooking. You know, it's going to take some time. I might as well. I'm starving. Let's go and grab that McDonald's. And you end up doing that. You come home, you have that. And then you feel horrible about yourself. Uh, you feel like, okay, now that I've, you know, broken my diet, mm -hmm. now all I might as well start over again tomorrow. Right? And then... So that day, the remaining of the night, you're not going to watch what you're eating. You probably go for your ice cream because you've already, you know, uh, crashed your diet, right? Um, and this process goes on and on and on, right? Now, this is very typical. You know, this is sort of uh, the, a very typical thing that I see when my patients come to me. This is, I mean, you could maybe some things might relate to you and some things might not, but in most cases, by you are doing pretty good to, towards the day and towards the night. Uh, some for, for some people, it's after dinner when they start binging, and that's because we crave, right? We have these cravings, and we have to. Um, it's hard to overcome them. So what I'm just going to share with you what actually happens in your body and why we have these cravings and why we tend to go for those fatty foods or those sweet foods. Okay, so I'm just going to share with you this. Uh, graph here. I hope you can see it. Yeah, Kathy, can you see? Okay, perfect. So on the on this side here, I have your blood sugar levels, and this is the time of your day. Okay. So when you have a meal, it doesn't matter what meal it is, whether it's breakfast, dinner, whatever. Your meal, every meal, even if it's a salad, you have some carbohydrates in it. So the moment you eat something, your car the sugar starts digesting from your mouth. And then uh, it goes inside your body and you get, you absorb it, right? So your blood sugars, uh, where's my mouse? Okay. So from the moment you eat your meal, your blood sugars are going to rise and they're going to come to a point, maybe two hours or something after your meal, and they'll come to a peak and then they start going down. And this is very typical, whether you have insulin resistance or you don't, this is very typical of how your body works. Um, it starts going down uh, from there. And... Um, after it reaches a point where you started, so your body tries to maintain a very strict um, sugar um, level in your blood. Uh, so when you start going down to where you actually started for your fasting blood sugar levels, this is when you start craving and you start feeling really hungry. I'm gonna move this on the side. Okay, so you see <laughs> that little minion there? That's what's happening to you when um, you reach a, when you start, you go to your fasting blood sugar levels, you start feeling hungry. This is a time that you want to eat something. And if you go beyond this point, if you don't eat and you go beyond this point, you will start craving sugary foods because your blood sugar is low. So your body's goal is to get your blood sugar back to normal, right? So that's why you start craving sugary foods. Now, let's say you don't have time, you have meetings all day and you just don't have time to grab something to eat and you let it go and you let it slide and your blood sugar drops even further, right? It goes down to this level here. And at this point, uh, you are going to crave fatty and greasy foods. If you're going to wait that long, um, sugars are going to be out of the window. You will want sugar still, but you still want something more greasy and fatty. And that's because your body now begins to think that it's in starvation mode. So your body thinks you're starving. Uh, I have to do anything I can to help myself survive. And you will go on the starvation mode. And once you're, that button is on, all your body cares about is absorbing fat. Okay. So let's say at this point you decide to have your meal. Okay. Let's say it's healthy. Let's say you are having a salad. If there is an ounce of fat in your salad, 
your body is going to absorb that first. It doesn't care about the vitamins. It doesn't care about the carbs, the fat, the proteins. It's going to only care about the fat. Even if it's the healthy kind of fat, it's going to take it. It's going to absorb it. And it's not going to use it. It's going to actually put it in your fat stores because right. it's going to think that this is time. I'm, you know, I have to save myself, right? Um, everything else comes later. Uh, it's going to absorb the proteins and everything else later, but the fat is the first priority. And because our brain functions on glucose and fuel, um, and say you're not eating enough carbs, your body is not going to take the energy from fats because that's going for storage. It's going to save the glucose because it knows that it will need it. So it's going to take, um, break down your muscles and give you energy for fuel. And that's where you're losing muscle mass. So you're taking protein from your muscles because that's where your protein is stored. Mm -hmm. So we take that, we break it down, give ourselves energy. But that's not a good thing because we are losing muscle mass. And muscle is the one that improves our metabolism. So we have a better metabolism when we have more lean muscle mass. Mm -hmm. And we are also burning fat um, normally when we have enough muscles. So if you're losing muscles, that's why people who go on low-carb diets or keto diet or other kinds of diets, they lose, um, the weight that they lost is really muscle mass. It's not fat. It's almost never fat because fat is always stored for later. <laughs> so we are losing muscle mass. And because uh, we lose that, we look thinner too, because you know our muscles are a little bul bulkier as well, right? So um, that's not a good thing. So first of all, um, you want to shift your body's way of uh, doing this and actually eventually start using up the fat and actually burning up the fat. So the plan is instead of waiting till you're super hungry, um, even at this point, it's not a good thing. It's, it's better to actually start eating um, a few hours, a few minutes or a few hours before you actually start starving, right? So that's a good time to start eating. Um, so that's about three to four hours after your last meal. That's a typical uh, time frame that it takes. For some people, it's faster, some people, it's slower, but that average is about three to four hours. So the idea is that if you um, make sure that you have a snack, so I just want to, it's not clear, but I'm not going to wait till your blood sugar goes all the way to the normal fasting range. It's a few steps before that, yes. um, just so that, your body has a constant flow of blood sugar levels. It's never going too low that you start craving sugars, okay? And if, if you are someone who's been yo-yo uh, dining all their life, you know, who's uh, always, um, uh, you know, had, you know, one large meal or have habit of skipping meals, this is going to take some time for your body to get used to. But the idea is that you want your body to feel that your fat is not your most valuable possession anymore. It's not on starvation mode anymore. So you want to let your body um, believe and trust you. Trust that you are going to feed it every few hours. And if you, you want to be able to do it consistently for a long period of time for you to be, for your body to trust that this is going to stay for good. Okay, now I can let my fat go because I don't need to store it. I'm, gonna, I'm getting a constant fuel of food and energy every few hours. So you wanna be able to uh, do this at least one or two weeks or more for your body to say, okay, I think this is permanent now, and I can let my fat go. So it's not gonna happen over, like instantly, but it will happen once you make a habit of getting on a schedule, okay? Definitely. So that I, it's right. a survival have thing, it, isn't it? The body yeah. has an innate quality that it wants to survive, and if it thinks exactly. that it's not gonna get more food, then it's, that's what it's going to do. Absolutely. And that's actually how you are managing your blood sugar levels too. Because first of all, uh, when you're constantly having a, con a good flow of blood sugar levels, like consistently, um, you'll have a better insulin response. That means you have a better chance of fixing your insulin resistance over time. And because you are not on... Um, starvation mode, your body has less stress. You know, when you're on starvation mode, survival mode, you are in serious stress levels. And women who have PCOS have more anxiety and depression uh, than people who don't. So if you have less stress, you have less inflammation. And inflammation is also a trigger for um, 
uh, for insulin resistance. So you're fixing the inf inflammation as well by giving your body a break, giving yourself a constant and, you know, staying away from hard diets. Mm -hmm. You know, most diets are really, let's just not get into them, but you know, they're not good for health in many, if, because you're losing out big chunks of um, food groups that your body needs. Right. So, and then you have less, uh, you have a better control on your blood hormone levels once your inflammation is in control and once your insulin and blood sugars are in control. So that's basically my goal for you. Um, at this point, it doesn't matter what you're eating as long as you're making sure that you get yourself onto a schedule, making sure you eat every three hours. So this is an example, maybe have breakfast at 7 a.m. and have a snack maybe at 10 a.m. And then um, after lunch, uh, 3 p.m. is usually a time where I've noticed a lot of people have a very, have a crash. So that's a good time to have a planned snack and then have, you know, dinner. And if you are someone who sleeps like after 10 or after 11, then make sure you have another snack before going to bed as well. Okay. So let me just quickly talk about the types of foods uh, and then I'll uh, end this. So obviously I think we all know we don't, we try not to eat simple carbohydrates, so nothing that have uh, free sugars in it, so nothing like sodas or even coffee with sugar. Uh, if you, when you have something with simple sugars, your blood sugar is gonna rise really high, but then it's gonna drop as fast as it rises, right? So as opposed to the way I showed you before, your blood sugar rises slower, but when you have high carbs, it goes up and then it falls down, so you feel hungry sooner Yes. So if you had like, yeah, just sugar and like coffee with sugar and you didn't have anything, you will feel hungry about an hour just right after your meal. And if you let it go, you'll start feeling a little tired and dizzy. Yeah, you get um, that and that's, yeah. yeah. So you have a deeper drop and you have a faster drop in blood sugar. So the way to make sure that doesn't happen is always make sure you have at least a high fiber um, food when you're having something. So if it's a carb, then make sure it's high fiber. It needs to have at least three grams of fiber in it, whether it's a snack or a meal, a minimum of three grams, or you want to combine foods. So I always say combine a few food groups. So have a little bit of carb, a little bit of fat and protein together, and that slows down the release of sugars. And that's what the glycemic index is. Yes. So it shows, slows down the uh, flow of glucose. So an example of a good snack would be something like having a milk uh, and a fruit or a fruit and nuts. I uh, usually say don't have just a fruit. Fruits are great, mm -hmm. but you want to balance it with something other than just carbs. So you want to have um, some nuts with your fruit or dairy or any other sources of um, any other food group at least. So not just one fruit. Okay. And then when you have your meals, make sure that you have a variety, making sure you have vegetables and at least two more food groups. So have some starch or grain. Um, low carb isn't always the best choice as long as you control the portions. So having a quarter of your plate to be starches and then your meats and then your vegetables. And that's basically how you can regulate your blood sugar levels. <laughs> and that's how you eventually balance hormones and lose weight. So that's my in a nutshell, <laughs> what you can do today. Do you have any questions, Kathy? Um, so one question would be, so like I, I love your uh, time, meals, uh, yeah. timing that you've put up. It's something that I try to um, adhere to. But like you said, I can, we can all relate to those days where everything goes out the window. So <laughs> you recommend, based on those times, we're basically eating in the 12 hours and potentially not eating for the 12 hours, which, you know, breakfast, breaking the fast. Is that something you would recommend generally that you do try to not eat too late unless, unless you said, like you said, that you're needing something? Exactly. Yeah. So definitely you want to try to have breakfast within the hour of waking up is ideal to get your body going and give you that energy to, for the rest of the day. Yes. Right. Great. Yes. And Having your fats okay or a, because you've been fasting, mm -hmm. is that likely to, like you said, that the body's going to um, store the fat? So what's your uh, thoughts around having fats at breakfast? So um, having a balanced breakfast is important. Having fats at breakfast is fine okay. because sleeping is different than staying awake and being hungry. When you're sleeping, your body is... Um, 
knows what it's doing it's managing it's do it's um using utilizing all your food groups and you know making um your liver is doing a really good job of managing everything so when sleeping you're not really on starvation mode your body knows that you're sleeping so it's okay to um get the ball rolling when you wake up so a little bit of fat is still good for health uh, just right. choose the right kinds and just the portion should be smaller yes, yeah absolutely. and uh so some of the thing i'm seeing with some of the the women is that they're very much they think if they eat less calories they'll lose weight and can you perhaps just touch a little bit on your philosophy around that uh, so uh, I would say bare minimum 1200 calories is what you need to survive, right? So you want to, if that's the lowest you want to be, and this is for most women, um, 1200 would be the lowest that you want to go. Anything below that, you go back to starvation mode again. Yeah. So you don't want to do that. So 1200 is a good goal. Um, and the la last goal you want to be at, unless you are like very, um, if unless you have, you're already very, um, I want to say, have a lower height and weight uh, range. Uh, but for most average people above uh, five, five feet, uh, you want to be able to uh, maintain at least 1200 calories as a bare minimum. Okay. So and, like, a, yeah. And that would still vary depending on your body weight. Yes. Potentially. And depending should... on your body weight and your height yes. uh, as well. Yes. Um, but in most cases, the, I've, um, I, I would say maybe only one percent of my patients have ever needed anything below 1,200. Mm. Um, but almost, so that's it's very rare. Let's just yeah. say that. Right. Yeah. That's been so interesting and informative today, and you explain the whole blood sugar roller coaster so much better than I can, <laughs> I can say. Yes. I hope you understood it. <laughs> oh no, no, that was really great. It was a really great explanation, and I think. Uh, it's going to be the, 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 the girls in the group are going to love hearing you talk. Um, I will make sure that I put your details with the video so that if anybody is wanting to uh, contact you and maybe find out about more about what you do, do you want to just explain a little bit about, um, so I believe you, you, like you obviously work face to face, but you also work distance as well? Yes. So like, yes. So I do see face to face um, uh, clients in Toronto but I also have an online program. So it's, um, it's how to create your own meal plan. So stuff that I just talked to you about, but it's more in detail about the types of foods, what kinds of foods to choose uh, at what times and how to make your meal plan at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And so it's kind of in that range. So I do have an online program. If anyone wants to sign up from long distance, they can do that. Great. Well, I'll put all your details like I said, with the video. Thank you so much for your time today. This has been really, really interesting. And I've, I've loved um, getting to talk to you. It's been lovely after all our messaging back and forth to finally, right. finally see you face to face. Yeah, it was really, it was really nice talking to you. And I hope to see you and do something like this again. Yeah, that'd be great. I'm really, they're wonderful. All right. I'll talk to you all soon. Right. Thank, Thank you, you, Kathy. Bye. Yeah.